If it's one thing plant lovers lust after, it's variegation, as in this Monstra Deliciosa. I'm here at Steve's Leaves and I'll be talking with Darren, the operations manager, on the benefits and challenges of variegation and actually how to select for variegation in your plants at home. So tune in to this episode of Plant One On Me, Field Trip Edition. So I'm here with Darren, who is the operations manager at Steve Sleeves, and we're gonna go a little over variegation, which I know is really popular among houseplant enthusiasts. Now, we have a couple different varieties here. Maybe you could take us through what each of the varieties are and maybe comment a little bit about what variegation means in plants. Uh, yeah, we actually have two plants here. Uh, one of them is a marble syngonium, and the other one is a marble monstera deliciosa. As far as marbling goes, it is actually a mutation in plants. It happens naturally, but it usually reverts back out in nature. So it'll happen and then it'll revert back and become green again. In the greenhouse and in your home, you can actually uh, keep it going, but sometimes it does want to revert back to its natural state. So you'll see this plant here. It's got some variegated leaves on it, but it's also got some solid green leaves on it. And then it goes all the way to the other extreme where the leaves can go completely albino. This is not good. Uh, the plant, Even though people love it. People love it, yeah, it's beautiful. But the plant no longer has any chlorophyll in this end and it can no longer support itself. Also with uh, variegated plants like this, the green, solid green leaves versus the variegated leaves is going to outgrow the variegated very quickly. Whenever something like this happens, it's always best to get as much green out of here as you possibly can. And same way with the white, you want to get the white off here as soon as you can too. Even though it's pretty, you can keep it for a little while, but uh, as soon as you see it keep going, uh, you know, past three or four leaves, you'll probably want to cut it off and get it back on track. So is the white one sapping energy from its like brothers and sisters or what's happening there? It is to an extent. I mean, it is taking some energy from the plant to continue to grow and it's not producing any. So without any chlorophyll in it, it's actually just continuing to grow without giving back anything to the plant itself. I have one um, exactly of the Signonium potophyllum albo variegatum, I think it's called, mm -hmm. but I must have missed it because I have two together and I looked at the one the other day and it only has white leaves and they're very tiny and mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, well this is the end of it because there isn't a green leaf. Uh, so you know, word to the wise, you know, you do, they're very beautiful, but you do want to have at least some green, I would imagine, right. on here. And this is correctable. I mean, if you'll go into right here, you can actually see that right before this white, there's a variegated leaf. Mm -hmm. So if you were to cut this plant back right here, it would actually put out a new growth that would continue on to be uh, green and or variegated. Uh, so anytime this happens, cut it back to the first leaf that is green, and you can check the stem too. The stem will show you that it's white on this side and it's green on this side. So that growth that comes from this node will either be solid green or variegated. More than likely, because I can see variegation right here, the, the leaf will come on out being variegated. And you'll sometimes see leaves that are split right down the middle, half and half. Yes, uh, I have some of those too. Mm -hmm. And that's, again, you can kind of predict what's going to happen by looking at the stems. Fascinating. Now, the same thing with the, when it goes all green like this, you want to get this green out of here because, like I said, it's going to overgrow this plant. Mm -hmm. And if it overshadows the variegated growth, it can actually, it's not going to kill the plant. The plant's just going to become a green plant and that's not what you paid for. So what you do is you'd search this plant back to where you can find a variegated spot on the stem or the leaves and cut it back there. And that next growth, as long as you see it next to the node has some white or some variegation in the stem, it will go ahead and, and produce variegated foliage. Well, when I think of the Signoniums, I mean, they are very prolific. They, they are growers, and I think we could actually see it from, from this one. It's mm -hmm. just overflowing. The Monstera, on the other hand, is a very slow grower. I find mine that are like, you know, unless I have like really good conditions, which is a little bit more humidity, you know, have some, you know, bright light, but not totally direct. Mm -hmm. Um, it will start to like grow a little bit, but it's it's a slow one. You have to be patient with it. Yeah, and depending on the the stage of variegation, like this leaf you see does have green, it does have white, and it also has an overlapping white on the green, which shades out some of the green. These are two separate layers of cells, 
in here. So the bottom layer is green, the top layer is white, and that's what you're seeing, that grayish green color in here. But what happens is this plant is now inhibited by the amount of chlorophyll that it has and about how much energy it can produce. So therefore they grow much slower when they're this way. That's again the reason that the green growth can outgrow the uh, variegated growth that much quicker. But we want them all to be this pretty and everything, so we have to just deal with the fact that they're going to be slow. And now does this one require a little bit more light compared to a regular green version? No, actually a little more, the more light on this white, uh, you're risking some uh, burning. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So that's not always the case with variegation, mm -hmm. but for, in this case, it, I also noticed that my monster, even my regular um, version, is pretty sensitive to light. I had one where it will go up right to the south facing mm -hmm. window because maybe it doesn't know any better <laughs> and it will burn. So I had to keep on pulling it away because it does grow incredibly fast and so it'll start to reach towards um, the light. So I actually had to physically physically move it away. Um, but it's also you know, important to know, I think that what you said is that in nature, this mutation is doesn't benefit the plant. So that's why we quickly see it disappear typically. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to encourage mutation um, with it as a grower in the in the variegated um, varieties or do you just have to like sit and wait and say oh I hope there's going to be something that splotches. I've found several plants in here that have variegated. Uh, it's usually when you're doing cuttings or rooting like begonia leaves as you were seen earlier the plants will come up with variegation but a lot of times it's not stable it grows out very quickly out of the five or six that I've dealt with in the last few months that I've found, the variegation wasn't stable at all. Mm. I still have one that's possibly stable. It's a variegated begonia, but we'll see how that goes. Yeah, there's also different kinds of variegation too. I mean, uh, what we're dealing with here is a, is a more stable form of it. The variegation that you see in these kind of plants is more inherent. Mm -hmm. um, it's color variegation, which is what uh, I'm talking about with the begonias. Was a, you know, well, thank you so much. This is really helpful. And I personally think that, you know, variegation is like so hot in the houseplant market oh, yeah. now that, you know, for people to say, how can I get more variegation? This is just the next step that will at least help them and also inform them that it does actually, you know, can take a little bit of energy and it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be the healthiest houseplant, but mm -hmm. you could um, select for it actually in your house so that it it, you have a happy medium where you aesthetically like it right. as well as the the plant is strong enough to be able to survive so thank you so much for You're all welcome. your knowledge steve's leaves has been growing unique varieties of houseplants for over 41 years you can check out all of his fancy foliage at stevesleaves.com hopefully that answered all your questions on variegation and got you more hooked on green and white leaves and of course, if you love these episodes, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel and follow along on Instagram at Homestead Brooklyn and on my website at homesteadbrooklyn.com. Ciao.